Well, you're welcome back to the program. Now, as we look to have Mr. Wilson Agaba back on the program, uh, remember that you can also join the conversation across social media platforms. Hello and good morning again, Mr. Wilson. Good morning and thank you for having me back. Sorry, well, um, there was a power outage that interrupted my uh, router. It's good to have you back. Well, you were you were earlier explaining something uh, surrounding, uh, you know, the rate of inflation that has gone down, the fuel of prices that are continuing to skyrocket, and the fuel of uh, the price of food commodities and other commodities around the country that are not agreeing to come down. Well, um, I, as I was saying, that um, I quite agree with the uh, analyst who spoke earlier, who said that the reduction in inflation may not necessarily uh, translate into a reduction in the price of food and other commodities consumed by the average Nigerian. Um, one, I mentioned earlier in my response that when you see a reduced inflation, it is because certain components of the items within that average inflation has dropped drastically. It doesn't mean that the relevant ones or the most used ones uh, dropped. And like the uh, economist said, what lays at the, what the foundation of everything within this our economy is power and transportation. And that's problem for me. The price of fuel goes up, costs more to generate power because of public power supply is running. And uh, then it costs more to move goods and services from point A to and, and selling that in plus a margin. So if the price of fuel remains high, it is most likely going to be very high uh, to buy things from the market. And I'll give you a very basic analogy. Uh, for instance, uh, within the last one or two months, about expecting the yam start rolling in, we'll have it at say two five, two thousand, and all of that. But unfortunately, I stopped by to buy uh, from. Uh, I was coming from Kefi and I stopped around the uh, Nyanya to price yam, and it's surprising that one tube of new yam. Is priced at 4500 So the change in price have not been reasonable. Because, of course, even though there are new yams, they still have to transport them at a very high cost. Let's not talk about the tax collectors on the road that will build them at every checkpoint as uh, they bring these yams into the city. So these are some of the issues. These are the reasons why you may not see a drastic drop in price of especially food items in the market. Well, well, uh, there have been some mixed reactions uh, surrounding a recent statement by the federal government that in order to boost, boost its international reserve, it's uh, willing to uh, boost it by, you know, adding $500 million federal government bond. Uh, what is your own reaction to this as an analyst? And what does this mean uh, for the Nigerian economy in, in this very, very turbulent times? One thing I have noticed about our government times and over again is that we like to take the shortcut. We like to dig holes to cover holes so that it will be said that, oh, within, during the administration, they did this, they did that. We fail to understand that government is a continent. As one administration is finishing, it doesn't mean the country is coming to an end and in is transform long-term wins. Yes. Because those are the things that will sustain the nation as time goes on. It's all right. Oh, I think that what the government is trying to do now is to borrow money to boost our reserve. 
Because that's what bond is. Bond is like writing a paper and say, ah, Mr. Man, you hold this paper and give me X, Y, Z money. And because you trust me that I will always uh, uh, make well on my promises, I'm going to pay you X, Y, Z plus interest at a time T. But, but how, now, how has the history of government bonds, federal government uh, bonds, been like in Nigeria in recent years? It appears to me that some people have been able to make measurable profit via buying into government shares and bonds uh, like what the federal government is rolling out now about 500 million dollars yeah i i didn't catch the last line of your question could you please take that well, well take it, it appears to be that people have in the past made some reasonable amounts of profit from buying into government bonds. Are we seeing a replication of this or are you entirely not in support of uh, these government bonds? You don't think it's a viable investment uh, option? No, a bond is a very legal means by which government can raise money, debt, raise debt, you know, whenever it deems fit. And it is like I always talk about debt. It is not the debt itself. It is not the size of it thereof, but the application of that debt. How do you apply debt? If you take debt to buy debt, then it is not commonsensical, if there's any word like that in economics. If you are taking debt, you should be buying assets that will yield interest, such that the interest yielded on that asset is higher than the interest you are paying on the debt. Okay, so that's on the part of the government. Then on the other part, you see, investors will consider the bonds and um, debt items that they put their money into or the investment uh, they put the, their money into or whatever asset they add to their portfolio. One of the things they consider is the long-term value. Um, you, you don't want to decide what you add to your portfolio based on the returns alone. You want to look at the risk. It is possible that an asset can give you a return of 20%, but the risk on it is 30%. That means there's a deficit of 5%. It would discourage investors from subscribing to such bond. Okay, so, and when you have a currency that is not stable, like the Naira, I don't think a lot of people want to consider it to buy into it, except if you are issuing the bond in dollars or any other currency uh, that is a bit more stable. And issuing a bond in foreign currency for the Nigerian government at the time, I don't think is I don't think it's quite good. Well, because well, you you, you mentioned you would be raising the, more naira as to. So. You mentioned that the Naira on, is unstable. We we all know that, that, that the Naira is unstable and it has some sort of volatility to it. And in recent times, the Central Bank of Nigeria decided in agreement with the federal government to float the Naira, which has also had its own effects on the economy subsequently. Uh, but yes. what, what, what going forward now, do we see a reversal of that, that policy? Uh, considering the fact that the Minister of Finance and Coordinating the Economy, Wale Dun, has, you know, boastfully said that Nigeria's foreign reserve has increased by about 4 billion naira since January of 2024. Or, or 4 billion well, US dollars, no. I beg your pardon. Well, you see, number one, they cannot just roll back that policy anymore. It is beyond them. You know, if you say you are going to start defending the Naira again. How much will you be paying off of the current value in order for us to assess dollar at 460? You are going to be paying at least 1,050 Naira or 1,040 Naira per dollar that every Nigerian gets to import something. It's not feasible. You don't have that revenue. Number two, it is that floating that led to the astronomical in the price of leading to a 100 per liter or uh, at price, uh, market price. Yes. And somebody is paid up to the enough for us to find at 700, 120, 650, whatever it is. And I suspect that is the government that don't have evidence. Because I don't think any uh, entrepreneur or uh, uh, philanthropy is paying that money. Somebody is paying something. So if you want to bring that down again to 200, the government is going to 
we pay 1,300 naira a litre. So they cannot roll back this policy. What is done is done. Advice to, to them is come real. To. The, the government needs to accept the problem. They are looking for the long solutions. I have been one of these solutions before. And for us to look at two hangings, at the two hanging fruit, we all eat food in hundreds of tons per day. Yes. How about the set of federal government farms, cluster farms? You know, these are things we can, with state government, you know, yes, if we can have six that are up to say 10,000 10, hectares, about, you, you can have a military base around this secured against this bank. Uh, headsmen one eat crops there and all of because the federal government would have, have said it very well. And we can use this to expand into the 36 and then maybe the 774 local government. This will first of all bring food sustainability. It will also generate more jobs. And when you have more, more, get more tax on, on salary, more revenue, and then you can put that infrastructure and can put forth other policy. We can cause corruption. I put the on my media and do that. The major problem of this country is corruption. And unless we do corruption, we cannot any well, and they must not as if, if we shy away from corruption just to see the face. Corruption is causing a lot of corruption is leading to our situation is not bad. If we take corruption out of the equation or bring it to a people, uh, well, I, I, I'm afraid, Mr. Wilson, Agaba, the, the time is not on our side and uh, we must conclude and wrap up this particular segment. But I must thank you very much for your very, very strong contributions to our topic today on the program. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Very much for having me. I do have a great day. Thank you. Well, that has been Mr. Wilson Agaba, who is a financial and business analyst and strategist, and he has been sharing his deep insights uh, with regards to Nigeria's current economic realities and ways of navigating through some of these turbulences.